Welcome to the campus of Carleton College in Northfield, Minnesota. Right now we're in the Cowling Arboretum. This is the birthplace of North American Druidry. The Reformed Druids of North America was actually founded on this hill in 1963. And they founded it as a semi-serious protest uh, against mandatory chapel attendance in order for college credit. They believed that if you force someone to attend a religious service, it detracts away from any spiritual experience one might receive. And so in part of their silly protest, they came out here claiming to be Druids, though they didn't know much about the ancient Druids at the time. They were conducting research on it at the library in their spare time. And they had come to the conclusion that essentially we are reformed Druids because we have shed the practices of the past. And particularly, it's like they, they know little of the ancient Druids, so that is part of what makes them reformed. And uh, later on, they would be writing everything down, which is something that the ancient Druids also did not do. Uh, third, and most significantly, is there later came to be a debate on the, um, on the concept of ritual animal sacrifice. There were some who wanted to have an animal sacrifice, and there were some that were vehemently opposed to it. And so they said, need I remind you that we are reformed, having shed these things that offend us. And so the side that wanted the, the sacrifice relented, otherwise the group would have broken up and fallen apart, and we wouldn't have North American Druidry as we know it today. And so on this hill, this is Monument Hill, in the Carlton Arboretum. And this stone indicates the site of the first church service in Northfield. It also commemorates on one side the location of one of the first houses in Northfield, right here. And also a year later, the first wedding in Northfield took place right here as well. And so according to Reformed Druid legend, the fourth side reveals all the mysteries of Reformed Druidism. Well, it's blank. <laughs> but someday, they dream that it will have the history of the first Druid service in Northfield. So at the first ritual of the Reformed Druids, they did bring out a portable altar covered with a white altar cloth. Uh, it was deemed to be an inferior kind of altar because in fact it was a portable record player. And so because it was deemed inferior, they decided to, to build their own stone altar. And it was built in the space between these pine trees. And they had the archdruid place a blessing of it. And it was a, an overcast day. And when he knelt down before the altar and prayed to the Earth Mother, the sun broke through the clouds and shined directly onto the altar. And they all took it to be a sign. There were some in the group who didn't take kindly to it. They felt that we were messing with powers that we didn't understand. And so they came in the night and they destroyed the altar. And so this is the first mention of what has been known to be the anti-Druids. And they rebuilt that first stone altar. And it was again destroyed by the anti-Druids. And so they built the altar a third time. And it, it lasted through the winter, but it wasn't doing very good in the following spring. And so the third time, well, and then it, it disappeared entirely. And so they built a new altar with mortar and more stones. And that's when they had David the Chronicler guard it overnight while the concrete set because he was worried that somebody would come out, the hands of the anti-Druids would again destroy this, their fourth altar. And, and so he stayed out here at the night and meditated and just got to experience the Earth Mother. And in the morning, this, the mortar was dry and he was ordained to the third order. And that is actually the origin of why Reformed Druids have an all-night vigil before entering the Third Order. And so it happened to be a very, uh, have a very pragmatic 
origin, but it is now a time-honored tradition. Despite the Arboretum being largely wild and overgrown in the early days, many of the Reformed Druids thought that this location was still too close to the hands of the Anti-Druid, and they wanted to move someplace further out and more secluded. From the Book of Latter Chronicles, chapter 8, verses 8 through 11. And they did go up on the hill, which was a short way off. And at the top of the hill, they did find a grove of three oaks. And they did rejoice in the renewal of the flow of the waters of life. And they did pour libation from them upon the rock, which they did find upon the hill where the three oaks did stand, strong against the sky. And that place came to be revered among the Druids, for it was a place of refuge in the time of their troubles. And they did call that place the Hill of Three Oaks. And to this day, that is the official name of this hill. So fatigued by the hands of the anti-Druids, in 1964, the reformed Druids saw this hill from Monument Hill. And they said, let us go to that hill and we will dub these trees honorary oaks and we shall hold our services here. And so when they got to this hill, which they hadn't used yet in their rituals, they realized these already were oak trees. And so they took it to be a sign. And here is the altar stone that they have used. And here is the fire pit for the sacred fires. And even now, the Druid sigil is engraved into the altar stone. They carved the Druid sigil onto this stone to mark it as their own. Though anyone can use the Hill of Three Oaks, this is the altar for the Druids. Steeped in the rich history of American Druidism, this place is at the top of my list of recommendations for a Druid or Pagan pilgrimage site. This is such a wonderful place to walk in the footsteps of Druids that have come and gone, who have been here and who have moved on to other parts of their lives, or even to meet the current Druids at the college, the students that have been carrying on this tradition for over 50 years. This is also the perfect place to get in touch with nature, to see and feel the ever-changing Earth Mother. This oak tree is maybe only 20 years old. It's a little older than that. It was planted here around 1993. This was replacing a tree just over there in the shadow of the larger oak that was struck by lightning many years before. So over time, the number of trees on the Hill of Three Oaks has changed a little bit, but it is more or less three or four right now. For right now, they know that the split oak is actually two completely separate oak trees. Welcome to the Druid's Den. This is a place on the campus of Carleton College that the Druids actually named, and now it's the official name for this location. It is a place for much celebration and much meditation. It has a fire pit here, and I know in the 1980s it was a site of a sweat lodge that the Druids participated in regularly. And also, here are some of the stones that were used in the sweat lodge, also called dragon eggs. And these are all over the place in here right now. So it's always fun to find a dragon egg and know that at some point another druid held this and called it a dragon egg. Aside from celebrations with bonfires and sweat lodges, this was also a place for many druids to have their all-night vigil. It's their rite of passage before entering the priesthood of the reform. This is actually the location where I had my vigil before I was ordained to the Third Order on the 50th anniversary in 2013. Welcome to the New Stone Circle. 
and the Arboretum. This is perhaps the most enigmatic sites for the Druids at Carlton. This stone circle was built in 1999 at the request of the Reformed Druids as a place in the Arboretum for anyone to enjoy. There were people that protested the creation of a stone circle, saying that it was making essentially a pagan temple at an otherwise Christian college. So the Druids were like, need we remind them? Anyone is invited to use this. And so the college helped out with the construction and it was funded by the student organization of the Reformed Druids of North America, which has been an official student group at Carleton College for several decades now. And so it was paid for through their annual budget and many Druids have enjoyed this site and of course everyone has. It's a very magical place and very peaceful as well. Just very mysterious in its own nature. There are 12 stones that make up the circle, including the altar stone and the three stones that hold it up as well. Some people have described this as a dolmen. Others have described it as a cromlech. It is not a burial, so therefore, I think a cromlech would be a more suitable classification of the altar. Despite this site being one of the younger druid sites in the Carlton Arboretum, it is very much already steeped in magic and myth. I'd like to recite chapter the third from the Book of Stones, part two. Few were more charming and charismatic than irony of the black locks, whose glance could open a hundred hearts and plunge one into mystery. Many were the times irony did mosey up the hill of Three Oaks to reflect on the reform. There stood the mysterious twelve stones on a rise nearby, and often surrounded by trash and high grass, for they were beloved by students, but shunned by grounds crew, who were greatly angered by their presence. Perhaps the anger was caused by their mysterious appearance, for they appear suddenly in the morning like mushrooms popping out of the ground or fallen from the sky. Not a blade of grass was bent nearby or footprint could be found to explain what force brought such heavy boulders to that spot. And no sooner were the stones removed, but they returned, often in the same location. Irony did notice, however, that their upkeep did keep him too busy, and a more secluded resting place for the stones must be sought, since the Hill of Three Oaks is a very busy spot. Importuning the president of the college and grounds crew, his petitions naturally found favorable ears and things were put in motion. Large machines that did crush their earth beneath their wheels as the stones had to be transferred over the many intervening hills and forest to a site that was remote and untouched by the hands of vandals. In a consortium of ancient astrological planning for which the druids are often attributed great skill, and the might of modern machines, the stones were placed in a circle with an enormous three-edged altar stone of alabaster white in the center, resting upon three other stones. None knew what lay beneath, except for irony, for not all secrets are revealed. Many legends have arisen about the stones of irony, or the stone circle, as it is now known. A powerful place it is. For many years, it has become the chosen place of Beltanes and ordinations, as the Hill of Three Oaks is often reserved by others with other agendas. Most of the sacred sites to the Druids are situated here in the Upper Arboretum at Carleton College. The Upper Arboretum is about 280 acres. It's hard to tell because the college keeps buying up land and adding to what is the Arboretum. And so right here we have a tributary of Spring Creek, which flows along the edge of the Upper Arboretum and flows into the Cannon River. And the Cannon River flows along the Lower Arboretum. So we are south of the Lower Arboretum. So it doesn't quite equate to being on a map. The Upper Arboretum is just higher ground than the Lower Arboretum, which is to the north. 
The acreage of the lower arboretum is significantly larger than that of the upper arboretum. I think the last I checked it's about 800 acres and they keep adding land to that as well. Roughly dividing the arboretum from the main body of the campus, Spring Creek has two artificial lakes in it called Lyman Lakes. And in these artificial lakes are also man-made islands. And this one is Stuzy Island, home to the Stuzy Island Labyrinth. Over here is Mayfet Island, which has a fire pit and a picnic area. Unlike some of the other sites in the Arboretum, the Druids don't lay claim to creating this meditation labyrinth. It is just something that has been here for some time. However, many a reformed Druid has meditated here, and I try to meditate here whenever I get an opportunity to. It is a place for quiet reflection, contemplation, and introspection. And the last place for today's exploration into the Arboretum at Carleton College is one of my other favorite places. This is the Council Ring. The Druids don't lay claim to the Council Ring either, but this is a place where Druid rituals have been carried out, and this is also a place where I actually had my vigil to enter the Sixth Order, the Order of Belenos. And that is one of the final parts of entering the Order of Belenos is that you vigil at the moment the sun is setting. Belenos is the Gaulish sun god. And then when the sun rises again in the morning, Belenos himself completes the ordination. And this place was so fitting for that. Because even over here is this plaque that says, as the sun goes back to bed, and the night returns with the Milky Way watching over us. Let's make ourselves comfortable while we watch the embers glow again, becoming scattered flashes of fire, then logs and flame in the Council Ring 54. Well, thank you for joining me on this journey of exploration of the Reformed Druid sites at Carleton College. If you're ever in Northfield, Minnesota, I'd say come here on a pilgrimage, explore the ancient sites, see the places that Druids have come and gone to before. I haven't shown all the sites because I don't want to give away all the secrets. And not to mention the entirety of the lower arboretum along the Cannon River Valley that is chock full of ancient Druid sites. Ancient in the last 50 years, I should say. So. Thank you for taking a look at what has become the legacy of American Druidism.